everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. So today's video is definitely different than usual. I wanted to share with you my top 20 crafting tools and supplies that I use pretty much every time I sit down at the craft table. Now I will be linking down in the description um, a link to all of these supplies. Now these are affiliate links and all that means is that if you click on the link and you happen to make a purchase, then I get a small commission at no extra cost to you. This is actually a great way to help creators all over YouTube just pay the bills. You know, crafting is a very expensive hobby. So a lot of the supplies that I purchase, actually all of them come out of my own pocket. So by shopping affiliate links, that just helps me uh, earn a small commission so that I can continue to bring you more content. And as always, it is greatly appreciated. Okay, well, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the list. So first up on my list are these gold scissors. Now, I have a ton of scissors. I have some regular scissors for just regular scissors. They have a really beautiful blue handle and I use them for vinyl, um, ribbon, like kind of whatever. I do have some fabric scissors. I have some pinking shears. Then I have a pair of scissors that I reserve just for adhesive, like foam tape and stuff. I do have a pair of non-stick detail scissors. Now these, I did not purchase these on Amazon. These are actually from Simon Says Stamp. They came in a monthly kit that I subscribed to. And I love these. These are non-stick detail scissors, but I did find a similar pair on Amazon that I will link for you. And these are really good for fussy cutting and they're also non-stick. So if I happen to use them with um, like foam tape or adhesive, then they, they just, you know, it doesn't stick. It doesn't get all goopy. So, but these are my beautiful gold scissors and I have pretty much switched to these exclusively. So all my other scissors, they're just hanging out, collecting dust. So pretty much recently, these are the two go-to scissors that I use on my craft table. And these I love, they are very heavy duty. They're definitely not flimsy um, and they're beautiful. So just wanted to share my favorite scissors with you. Speaking of cutting, I have paper trimmers. So about two years ago, I purchased this big mamma jamma right here for my classroom. And I bought this on Amazon and I love it. It has like a little safety lever here to keep this down. It is a guillotine style paper cutter and it's 12 by 12. I love this. I use this all the time. I cut down 12 by 12 paper. I cut down large rolls of uh, vinyl into sheets. Um, I use this for my card bases. I love this. This is great. And I've had it a couple of years. I've never had to replace the blade. I've never sharpened the blade and it cuts like butter every time. So this is one of my absolute favorite tools that I have in my craft space. The other two paper trimmers um, and I this one here is by Fiskars and it is a little mini guillotine paper trimmer. And I use this a lot of times when I'm making a card and I don't want to have the big mama out. So this one, I do wish this was just a little bit bigger. So this is like a four by six. Um, I know that they make a six and a half by eight and I wish I had that size of paper trimmer, but this actually does a great job for card making. And now this particular paper trimmer, I do want to talk about it. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. I did not get this one on Amazon, but you, they have a ton of them. What I like about it, it has a swing out arm, so I can cut longer pieces. And then this particular arm right here, there's, well, obviously you have the cutting blade. And then I use something that is also on my list. I use my bone folder in this slot and just slide it along that groove and I can score my paper. So a lot of times I will 
in my craft space, I will cut on the Big Mama, I will cut a bunch of card bases and then I will stick them in here and I'll just score them really quickly. So that's just another way to use this type of paper trimmer is you can score and not just cut. Um, the only thing about these type of paper trimmers is I find that the blades do wear out quite a bit sooner than, you know, my guillotines are perfect. They are very dependable. These blades do have to get replaced more often, especially when you see your paper start to fray and stuff. But I do like the compact size of this. So this has made the list. Those are scissors and paper trimmer. The next thing on my list is measuring tapes. So this is the traditional pink sewing tape. Now I've had this pink sewing tape for years. I think I've probably had this for about 10, 15 years. And when I got into Cricut crafting here recently, I bought one of these. This is a retractable um, little measuring tape. So it's just like the other one. It's got inches on one side, centimeters on the other. And I put a cute little monogram when I was trying out my Cricut when I first got it. But I love this and my daughter frequently steals this. So I need to buy a pack of these. In fact, I have a link um, in the description for, it's a three pack of these. They have different colors and then it comes with this. So a three pack and one of these, and it's not very expensive at all. And so I thought that was pretty economical. And then you can definitely have these in more than one spot. So I probably will be purchasing another round of these myself here in the next day or two. Okay. So that is the first four um, items and it really centered around cutting tools and measuring. So the next round of items really, um, they, these are like Cricut tools. So behind me, you'll see that I have my big maker three, which I absolutely love. And, um, then I will talk about some other Cricut things later. But the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about is something that I purchased with the recommendation of one of my viewers, and it is a True Control weeding toolkit. Um, so normally with Cricut, you use the regular weeding tool. And what I found is I was crafting so much that I made this really, it's very sharp. Like if I poke myself, it, I'm gonna hurt myself. But as far as the vinyl, it was dull and not really doing its job. One of my viewers um, actually suggested the True Control weeding kit. And so what this has is, you can see that I have my weeding tip here. And how these work is, is a little dial at the bottom. So you turn it to unlock it, and then you do a little plunger and the tip comes out. The tip then sits in this little deal here. So we have the knife blade, the weeding tip, we have the poker, um, that's handy for dies, etc. And then we have like an angled tip. So you can kind of see this one. Can you see that? There we go. So this right here, it has like a little hook on the end. And how this works is you open with the dial and then you, there's a it's kind of like a certain shape. So you just grab your tool, pull it up, all right? And then you lock it into place. So this has now become my go-to weeding tool for vinyl. I love this so very much. And what I like about it is that I have these little extra tools right here. So definitely uh, if you want to really um, have some options for weeding, this is a great investment. I absolutely do not regret this purchase. This was phenomenal. So thank you to my viewer who suggested that. And along those lines with the True Control weeding kit is I have, actually I have two of these. I have a blue one and a green one. So the True Control knife, um, a lot of creators were using these and I was like, oh, that's okay. I'll just use my husband's X-Acto knife. No, no, this right here is a game changer. I reach for this constantly because I 
in, historically would just use my nails for everything. Now I use this for my weeding tool for everything because this just slices everything. This is like surgical grade. Anyway, I have the blue one and the green one and I do have the little pack. It comes with a pack of blades. So in the package, it's this and a pack of blades and it, it works the same way. You just turn the dial, do the plunger, and then insert the new blade. So this, I use this pretty every time I craft without fail. This is on the craft table and it absolutely gets used. So the next Cricut item is um, actually, these kind of go together. So this is like two different tools at one time, but uh, this is the extra large Cricut scraper. Now, when I first got my machine, um, my husband had bought me, you know, the big toolkit and everything and it had the little bitty scraper, which was great. And I was like, oh, okay, this is fantastic. And then I saw this and I purchased it and I have never looked back. My tiny little scraper, I think I've only used a couple of times since I purchased this. Um, I love this. It is a little flexible here. And now, now mostly what I use this for is I use this to um, scrape things off of my mats because it is gentler. It you know, has a little bit of flexibility and it's large, so it covers a big surface area all at once. But I do really like this um, scraper over the little one. I just think this is a, a much better product. Now, I did purchase a two pack of these. This is Tech Wrap. And when I first bought these, I actually had no idea that Tech Wrap was a big uh, producer of vinyl products. And I honestly have not used their vinyl yet, but I plan to try it out because I hear it is phenomenal. Normally, um, I'm either using up my Cricut stash that I had purchased when I first got my machine, or I have a lot of vinyl from Expressions Vinyl, and I just absolutely love their vinyl. And, you know, I like to shop local when I can. So um, they, they tend to be my go-to, but I think I would like to try Tech Wrap Vinyl because I've heard that it's really awesome. And that will maybe be a video experiment to compare. But anyway, these are Tech Wrap squeegee scraper, you know, burnished tools. And I have a two pack of these and I absolutely love these. This is what I use when I am burnishing my transfer tape down onto my uh, products. So um, anyway, two different type of scraper squeegee tools and I love both of them. And then the last Cricut tool in this particular section of the video is a brayer. And I held out for a while. I think I probably had my machine for, oh, about a month maybe. And I kept hearing, get a brayer, get a brayer, get a brayer. And I was like, no, I can just smooth the stuff out on my mat. This has been a game changer. And this right here, if you want to do like the sticker paper or the printable vinyl, the print and cut, the infusible ink, this is really a must, but I do use it every time I put my vine, anytime I put anything on my mats, I do use this and really brayer that down. You can actually also use this to do some ink techniques when you're making cards. So um, I've seen some videos where people use the brayer to create some really beautiful backgrounds with their um, stamping inks. So I haven't tried that yet because I'm a little not confident, <laughs> but um, it's just a beautiful technique. So I really want to give that a try, but a brayer is a great tool to have in your craft space. So with, we've had our cutting tools and measuring, then we've had some Cricut tools. So let's move down to some general crafting tools that I use pretty much every time. And some are very specific to certain projects and then some I use every time. So let's move on to the next section. So in continuing with tools, a couple of things. I talked earlier about a bone folder. So this is my bone folder and it's just, you know, a regular bone folder. And I use this anytime if I hand fold some paper and I need to have a really good crease 
or if I want to score my bases down the middle and I'll just use them with the I'll just use them with the trimmer here you can just run it down here like this and it gives you a really nice score line um, just a little tip that I learned from another creator but anyway this is my bone folder and I use this every time I make handmade cards. So very invaluable there. And there's all different kinds of bone folders, like different shapes. I know that there's some Teflon bone folders. So um, I'll just link to the one that I have. This, now I couldn't find a single. So the link that I have for you has several of these, but they're kind of fun. Um, they're just mini silicone, mini hand silicone tongs. And so what these are for is when I do my heat embossing, then these will hold the paper and my little heat gun. And that way, not only do I protect my mani, but my fingers don't get hot. And it just, it's just a nice tool to have. Now, do you really have to have a tool like this? Absolutely not. You know what works really well? Clothespins. I just don't have a lot of clothespins. I have some mini ones. That's not gonna do the job. I'm talking regular clothespins. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna buy a package of those. Um, clothespins are fun because I can do wood burning on them and use some other projects. But um, I happen to get this on a whim and um, I do use it. Not all the time, just because it kind of sits up here and on the pegboard. Um, but uh, this is good. And if you don't want to invest in this, then I would say just definitely get some good clothespins if you're going to be doing the heat embossing. Okay, so there's that. Now, this next tool, I don't know where this has been my whole life, but reverse tweezers. I do have the Cricut ones. They're just kind of hanging on the little wall over here. And then I got these um, not too long ago and reverse tweezers. What I love about these is that not only does it help me um, with my vinyl and my paper projects and my card making to keep my fingers out of the way so that I can actually see what's going on, but you have to pinch them to open them. So I know that when I, when I put these on something, they're going to stay put. And I recently learned from another creator that when you go to tie a bow, the first time you, when you tie the little first round, then this, clip that on there, and this is your third finger. You know how you don't always put this on the bow and can, you only have two hands, so you can't hold the, the fabric or the ribbon and then keep tying. This is your friend for holding that ribbon uh, tight while you continue finishing up the bow. So just another way of using a tool that I would have never thought of. So I love to learn new techniques and that was definitely one of them. This, I use this every time I craft. Another tool that I really enjoy is one of these. I'm sure that many of you have seen these. They come in different colors. Um, this is a dual tip rhinestone picker tool and so not only is it pretty but they have these little wax tips on the end these unscrew and you can replace these so I had another one of these and I actually dropped it and broke the wax tip and I was very sad because I didn't know that they unscrewed and you just replaced the tip I thought you had to replace the whole thing so learned something new but anyway these help pick up like sequins and jewels, etc. Like so your embellishments when you're doing cards. And then this side, it has like a little ball on it. I don't know if you can see. Can you see the little ball there? And um, some of them don't have the ball on the end and some of them do. And this just helps you move things around to where you need them without getting your fingers in the way. So I absolutely love this tool and I do use this every time I make cards. So again, more tools that I pretty much use every time I craft. Um, another thing that I use, and I don't use these necessarily the way they were intended. So these are those clear acrylic stamping blocks. 
and I rarely stick a stamp on here and stamp these down. Um, I have a different tool that I use for that. But what I use these for are to lay on top of my cards when, you know, when I use liquid glue and I just need to put some weight on a card for a minute or so, then I use these. And I have a small one, I have a large one. Sometimes if I really uh, am kind of concerned, I need a lot more pressure, I'll put them on top of each other and then stick them on the card. So I use these all the time when I'm card making. And um, very rarely do I stick a stamp on here and use that, but I can see the, the benefit of doing that. So there's those. Um, something that I purchased recently are some inks, and I did do a video on this. I bought inks to use with my alcohol markers. So I have a whole bunch of alcohol markers over here, and I wanted to compare different types of inks. So I had my Cricut draw out using two different pens, draw a picture, and then I colored with the alcohol markers. And then I bought like, oh, I wanna say three or four of these different ink pads. And this one was my clear winner. I absolutely um, love this for stamping an image and then coloring it with my alcohol markers. Very, very pleased. The other ink pads that I purchased, they're, they're good and they're fantastic and I like them and I don't regret purchasing them. Um, I do have to let them dry a lot longer than this. This seems to dry really quickly for me, which is good. Um, and so I think this will be my go-to for stamping when I'm going to be using alcohol markers. And the others, I'll just use them for the various projects um, that they're they're designed for. And then along with that is the Versamark embossing stamp pad. So this is very sticky. It's a clear stamp pad. This is really sticky. And so once you stamp your image with this, it stays sticky for a while. And then you can sprinkle your embossing powder onto the stamped image and use your heat gun to melt it and it just comes out really good. I love Versamark. You can also use it kind of like a, like a watermark um, on a card. You have to let it dry to do that, but um, this is great for the heat embossing. One of my favorite pro products that I have in my craft space. And then the next thing um, are these bags. Now, this particular package in my hand did come from Michaels, so it's the Recollections brand. And there's only 50 bags, and I pay like three, three, almost four dollars, three or four dollars for this. Sometimes I can get them on sale for $2.99, but there's only 50 in here. On Amazon, you can get like 200 in a package for not much more. I mean, just pennies. But anyway, so I've linked these. When I make cards, I don't have any here handy, but um, when I make cards, I put the card and an envelope in these bags. They are resealable. You just take the little tab off right here like that. And they just keep the cards clean and dry, protected until I'm ready to send them out or give them to whoever. And then the, the really nice thing is if you make handmade cards, and you want to gather up a little a little pack of them and gift them to someone, or maybe you sell your cards. Um, you can put them in your in the bags and then put them all together and tie them with a ribbon. So I use these, and I do use these for other purposes. So sometimes I will be putting some craft materials together, and I just need them to stay together in a little bag until I get to them. So these. These are great because I just stick the materials in here and close it up and they're together and not going anywhere until I use them. So I really do love these bags. You could also use these for treats, you know, and then put a little topper on the top like this, but it would cover the bag decorated with, you know, paper and vinyl, all of that to do. And then you could even use the, the stays on 
black ink to stamp on here. Like there's, these are so versatile. I'm telling you, these are they're great to have in your craft space. I just have four more things to share with you. And so these are the big items. So I saved the big ticket items for the end. And these are just things that, you know, I'm a teacher and I have this big of a budget for crafting. And some, I, I try to be very mindful about my purchases and I try to shop my craft space and I really try to repurpose things that I may not have thought to use for something. So I, I just try to be mindful about how I spend my crafting dollars. So these four things are, I would say a little bit more, actually that's not true, I'm just kidding. The paper trimmer, the Big Mama. Now that was an investment, this, this was um, not, it's not crazy, but I did, and I think I actually got it on sale when I purchased it a couple years ago. I waited for it to go on sale, but it was so worth the money that I paid for it. So this, I don't always think of this as a big ticket item, even though this I would probably put in the big ticket item category. But if you want to save up or you can swing this, um, this is really worth it. So anyway back to the last four tools. So I've talked a lot about heat embossing and so on, and this actually is pretty inexpensive for a, a big ticket item. I think this particular one that I purchased was a little less than $10 and you can get them in all different colors and styles, but basically you just plug it in, turn it on, let it heat up for a minute or two, get really nice and hot, it comes with a little stand, kind of like on a curling iron, and then you just you just go to town on your card with your embossing um, ink and uh, various embossing powders, and it just works great. I also use this tool if I do some watercoloring or I need to um, have some stamping ink dry a little faster than I want to be patient for. And so this is great. I, I really hem hawed about this for a while and it, it took me some time before I broke down and bought one, but I am so glad I did. This was a really good investment in my craft space. The next investment that, and actually there's another piece of this, but I didn't pull it out, but the Easy Press Mini. Now you can buy the Cricut brand. This is the Cricut brand. Um, I wasn't familiar with the HV Ront brand at the time that I purchased this, but I absolutely love my Easy Press Mini and I use it a lot. Um, I use this unless the surface area of my project is just so big that it really does make sense to use my Easy Press 2. And I use that for t shirts, and so I make a lot of t shirts, I make a lot of big bulk orders, but this I use, I use this on paper crafts, I use it on vinyl crafts. If I can get away with using the Easy Press Mini over the Easy Press 2, I will generally pull this out. Just, I like that it's compact and it doesn't take up a lot of space in my craft table. Um, but I do love my Easy Press 2 and I'm really glad I have that. Um, I really want one of those big, you know, heat presses that are just, you know, the big thing with, I don't have the space for that and I wish I did. Maybe maybe I can make that work, but I'd also have to save up for it with, you know, teacher salary. But anyway, Easy Press Mini. And sometimes these go on sale. I and I know that the the HV Raw and the Cricut, depending on the day, they they're comparable in price, but then a lot of times you can find one or the other cheaper so just check into that and I'll have a link to both items down in the description so if there's like the paper trimmers you know if there's more than one one type of thing that I've showed you I'm linking all of those so that you can just kind of check it out and see what you think um, and make the best decision for you or just put it in your wish list for a later time just kind of whatever the next purchase and this is probably I would say not, not the top expensive thing that I've bought in my craft space over the last few months, but I would say this is like number three. And 
I do not know how I have ever lived without this item. It is my mini mystique. So I saw a lot of people using these and prior to the mini Misty, this was my go-to for stamps and I really didn't stamp very much because I wasn't really good at it and I would constantly mess up and I just did not enjoy stamping with these basically. So I finally saved up and purchased this. Now the Misty's are pricey. This particular one I think I got for um, somewhere in the ballpark of 50 ish to be honest with you and and that was pretty hefty for me at that moment when I purchased it but wow it has it has paid for itself 10 times over and there is a bigger one and I'm thinking for my birthday that I want the bigger one as well because sometimes the projects I'm working on I just need a little more space so this one is um let's see it, this is like a, a four and a half by six and I absolutely love this this product this who, the woman who invented this is genius you know she gets triple gold star you know she's a plus series you know but anyway it does come with the magnetic bar and this is just washi tape to help you know me pick it up off the thing it comes this is just some acetate it comes with some grid paper and then I laminated this with my laminator my laminator is super cheap I think I paid 20 bucks no I did not pay 20 but I think I paid like 15 bucks for it on sale at one of the office stores and my laminator is awesome but I just laminated this so that I could easily wipe off any stamping ink that got on there it's got like this is called like a little mouse pad. Basically it's foam pad to, to elevate your card paper. And then when you're using the bigger ginormous orange cling stamps for backgrounds, you can stick them down in here. And um, then you do your paper like that and get a nice impression. So I absolutely love this product and I use it a lot and sometimes I use it just to help me line things up and not necessarily just to stamp so I do use this for more than just stamping this is a great tool and um, if you can swing this and because you're a stamper if you can swing this that you will not regret a misty so just something to think about for the future if you don't have one then finally the very last thing that I wanted to share with you today is my cute little Cricut Joy. Okay, so funny story. I don't know why, but for some reason I was, you know, it was late night and I was watching YouTube videos and I saw something about Cricut and, and I had a Cricut machine like when they first came out and they couldn't really do very much and had the cartridges and it was not for me it just it was too cumbersome i didn't like it and i thought why would anybody use this this is this is too complicated but um they've obviously come a long way and i'm obsessed with my cricket so uh santa pa apparently paid attention to what i was watching on youtube and brought me the maker three for christmas and I was very shocked. That's not a purchase that I would have made for myself, but I am so thankful and grateful. It has really opened up a whole new world for me. And then um, recently, I I needed something that I could be able to take to school because I do use um, my Cricut for school projects as well. So I needed something that I could actually take to school with me. So I purchased this and I do have a little carry case for it. But um, I thought, well, you know, I don't know. And so I purchased the Cricut Joy and I absolutely love this. First of all, if I'm doing quick little mini projects or I'm doing cards, um, this is perfect. And it does write. So I picked up a package of, you know, the big pack of pens. I actually found those on clearance at Target. And I was so thankful because the Cricut Joy comes with a black pen and it comes with a little cutting blade. Um, and I find that for the most part, if you are wanting to try out a Cricut and you're not sure, um, this is the cheapest of the Cricut machines. 
A lot of times you can get it for about $99. Sometimes they run anywhere from $129 to $179. And I know that they have the Joy Extra, which the difference between the Joy Extra and this is this does not do print thin cut. And if you don't care about that, and there's actually some workarounds for that, but this, if you're just wanting to try a Cricut out and see if it is something for you, and you don't want to invest a whole lot of money, the Cricut Joy is actually a really good purchase. And I do have a big Spellbinders die cutting machine, but I don't have a lot of dies. So that was a present as well. And, um, so a lot of times I will make my own sentiments with offsets to go behind them, just like I would with vinyl, but I'll do that out of paper and I'll do it with my joy for cards. So I don't necessarily have to have um, wafer dies and um, I do like them. They're fun and cute, but a lot of times I will create my own little wafer die if I see something that has inspired me, then and I'm like, well, I don't really want to purchase that right now. I'll just have the Cricut Joy cut it out for me. And it works really, really well. And I love that it is compact. It's very light. I can take it around with me. It's fun. And then I can take it to school. So that's also a win-win is it's a great travel Cricut to take with you. So um, this is my last item to share with you today. So I hope that you um, maybe saw some tools that you want to investigate to see if they are something that is right for you. Um, I hope that I was able to give you a little bit of information. I just wanted to share a lot of the tools that I use every day. And I do realize that, I mean, some of these tools you can purchase um, at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Sometimes you can look around your own craft space or your little office area and say, oh, well, this tool that I have would serve the same purpose. So just hopefully some things to think about that would help you in your craft space to um, work on your projects and give you some um, extra benefit. And then if you need it, the links are down in the description box and you can go check them out. Um, they're pretty much Amazon links, like I said just for convenience. And um, so, yeah, that's just really what I wanted to share with you today. And um, I'm so thankful to all of you who have subscribed to my channel and are watching my videos, liking them, sharing them, commenting. Oh, I love the comments. Those are my favorite. I really appreciate all of the positive comments, the questions. I love to, as a teacher, I love to show people how to do things. And I really do try to think of, of doing crafts in different ways. Um, you know, it's easy just for us to mimic and emulate others that we are very inspired by. So I do that on my channel, but I also try to, to come up with some creative ways to do things in a new way. Um, maybe that someone hasn't thought of before. Um, you know, I'm still learning myself, so I'm so thankful to all of you for joining me on this journey and just coming along with me and liking the channel, sharing the channel, engaging on the channel. It is really just filling my, my bucket and it's crafting has become a really big therapy for me. It has um, really introduced a calm in my life as a busy wife, mom, teacher, um, we don't always take the time for ourselves and through crafting, I have found time to just take time for me and I've really enjoyed this hobby and so that is why I started the channel. I didn't even expect, you know, five people to watch the channel. So I am just so thankful to all of you who have subscribed and uh, engage in the crafting community here on Jenny Lynn Handcrafted and so with all of that said, I want you to have an amazing day. Take time for yourself and, you know, just create a life that you love every day. Imagine, create, just continue to do things that bring you joy and happiness. And um, yeah, so that's really all I have. Thank you again for joining me. And until I see you in the next video, happy crafting. 
Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.